Now, I'm just barely getting into helium mining. I'm making a whopping seven cents a day on my miner, and we have upgraded the antenna, but as you guys may know, I have it just mounted in the attic. It's, I don't think it's gonna help much. I gotta get it mounted outside. It's been extremely windy, stormy, all that sort of stuff, and the cable's not a little, just a little too short to get all the way to the roof. We're gonna get there, and then we should hopefully get better mining profitability the other option that i'm looking at is moving it into a city where i'm at right now essentially there's no other hot spots around me for like a, a couple miles and then what's interesting is because i'm in a neighborhood i do know now that there's a couple more helium miners in my neighborhood but it's one square in the middle of basically nowhere with three helium miners all just witnessing each other. So it's kind of hilarious, but uh, what I need to do is essentially get out of this square and into the squares, you know, or that they're not even squares, are they? Sorry, are they octagons? I forgot. You know what I'm talking about though, the little, the little, the little geographical mark, but I am keeping track of helium now a little bit more so we'll be reporting on it and what we have is two eips coming we have helium improvement proposal 54 and 55. we're going to go over them real quick you can vote on them the easiest way to vote on them is just to open your helium app it's going to prompt you to go ahead and vote for them and then of course it will be based on what it looks like to me the uh, the amount of miners you have and, and the amount that those miners are earning in some form or fashion. So luckily, proposals and all that, the consensus or the governance, excuse me, for helium does go through the miners, which is great. So let's get a summary of helium improvement proposal 54. This helium improvement proposal serves as both an explanation of the current proof of coverage targeting behavior, as well as a proposal for a more scalable replacement using an H3 based index. We are proposing it as a HIP to communicate and acknowledge that this is a change to the current implementation, but we believe it still falls within the original intent of proof of coverage. Motivation, the current targeting mechanism relies on a global list of uh, asserted hotspots. This list, as the network grows, is increasingly expensive to maintain and examine. Additionally, this list does not support garbage collection, so inactive hotspots are counted towards targeting, probably leading to a targeting skew in hexes and it's hexes. That makes more sense. One, two, three, four. What is that? One, it's six. Yeah. One, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six sides. So they're hexes. Anyways, I, I, I have like, this is what my hex looks like. <laughs> Except imagine this hex, like all the way over here, like all over here. But that's what my hex looks like. I feel like, um, <laughs> An example of, so it, it leads to targeting skew in hexes. An example as such mistargeting is here. The goal of this proposal is to, uh, pro, the goal of this proposed work is to maintain the existing targeting semantics as closely as possible, but rework them to operate one, operate on a more scalable data structure. A secondary goal is to reduce the active use of this edge case in order to enable more frequent proof of coverage activity in an area. We don't believe this particular edge case is being exploited in a widespread manner, although we do see a few instances of it. With the publishing of this HIP, however, we believe it may become more interesting to arbitragers. That's interesting. Stakeholders. All hotspot owners are directly affected by this HIP. It should improve fairness and targeting for proof of coverage, but may affect those hotspot deployers who are taking advantage of the current mistargeting behavior. 
There is a detailed, uh, basically a detailed explanation here. Please go check it out for the details later. We don't have a ton of time today. I just wanted to get the overview here out for you guys. We have a second one as well, and this is being voted on too. And this is HIP 55 validator challenges. And so let's get into it. The summary, this helium improvement proposal proposes a, <laughs> this proposal proposes a change to how proof of coverage challenges are generated and submitted to the Helium blockchain to allow for further network scalability and to lower the hardware complexity and costs of hotspots. Specifically, it moves the responsibility of proof of coverage challenge creation to validators and consequently proposes moving economic rewards for creating challenges to this group as well. Hmm... Hmm. Originally, hotspots were the only kind of entity on the network. They were responsible for blockchain production, challenges, witnesses, etc. With the switch to validators, we moved beyond that model for block production. But we still have significant computational overhead and complexity on hotspots as a result of the old design and constraints of proof of coverage. This complexity has become a significant pain point. Hotspots must now keep up with the blockchain that is produced on significantly more powerful hardware, and they must contend with the enormous peer-to-peer -peer network to root challenges and witness reports. The global chip shortage have also made it harder to source capable hardware for building hotspots that can meet those requirements. To address these issues, the core developers have been working on design and implementation of an alternative proof of coverage challenge mechanism we call validator challenges. In brief, validator challenges move the role of generating challenges to the consensus group. This not only allows us to free hotspots from the burden of following the blockchain, but it also moves the entities in initiating challenges to machines with much more stable and predictable networking, which reduces the likelihood of connectivity failures. Hotspots can become clients of validators to learn about blockchain updates in general, whether or not they are currently being challenged, and where to deliver witness receipts. Stakeholders, hotspot, and validator owner operators. Hmm. There's a detailed explanation there too. Both of these, when I saw the votes yesterday, were pretty much all in favor. Now, do I do want to get more explanation on that second one, especially because obviously um, validators, as well as like the hotspot owners, right? They're able to essentially vote on this by nature. To me, it seems like this voting process swings in favor of the validators, and I'm not sure that's okay. Uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts and opinions down below. I'm very new to Helium, so I'm still kind of learning and feeling out like what should be acceptable and what shouldn't be acceptable, especially from a governance and, of course, consensus mechanism platform. I'm doing more research. I'd like to hear your thoughts, especially on this last one, the Helium Improvement Proposal 55. I'm not sure I'm okay with it, but like I said, it looks like everybody else on the network is. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here, or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next Tuesday.